Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm back with a comparison video. This is the fifth in my series. I'll link to the others in my description, the other four. But I'm here with the one that you, probably a lot of people were waiting for, especially a lot of people in Chicago. And this is our matchup against the Cubs. <laughs> Now, we play the Cubs every year, but this particular year, we also um, are playing the NL Central. So, the Cubs kind of just flow right into that mix, but we would have played them anyway. And I did do a Cubs video last year. I will link to the comparison against the Cubs last year. I apologize for the light, you know, the two light beams here, on, but, you know. I gotta have some kind of studio lighting of some kind. So anyway, um, but this is the comparison video of 2021 of the White Sox to the Cubs. And that's going to be a little different, as you're going to see. So anyway, to recap, last year the Sox were 35 and 25. We tied for second, technically, in the AL Central. But we were really the third place team because we were tied with the Indians and we had a worse record against the Indians, which made us the third place team, the de facto third place team. So, uh, but we had the same record the Indians had. Uh, the, the Cubs last year were 34 and 26, only one game worse than what we were, what we finished. Um, we, <clears throat> batting average wise, because I'm going over the lineups in a minute here, uh, Batting-wise, the Chicago White Sox uh, hit 261, which was uh, first in the or second in the American League, and we had 96 home runs, which was first in the majors and and the American League. So uh, let's go over the projected lineup again. The manager of the uh, White Sox will be Tony La Russa, coming back for his second tour as a White Sox manager. And by the way, you like how I'm like playing both sides here. I've got the Cubs hat on, but I've got the White Sox jersey. I want to be impartial. That's what we're all looking for, right? So anyway, the uh, the White Sox lineup will, um, it'll, it'll spec out something like Tim Anderson at first, uh, or Tim Anderson first um, and playing shortstop. Adam Eaton second in playing right field, although I believe he'll be part of a platoon with Adam Engel. And he will play probably against um, right-handed pitching, while Engel may play right field against left-handed pitching. But again, that's a decision for Tony La Russa to make. Uh, Nick Madrigal at second base. Yes, Monty Grandal at catcher. Jose Abreu. At first base, last year, Abreu had 19 home runs and had a 370 on base percentage. The man had a great year last year. 19 homers, and remember, they only played 60 games last year. And he didn't play every one of the 60 games. Uh, Eloy Jimenez in left, and he may be the DH at times, or he may be the DH, and they may have Garcia in left to start the season. And then that even depends on what happens later on, as you will see when we get to the bench. Johan Moncada at third base. Lewis Robert in center field. Lewis Robert had kind of a uh, wishy-washy offensive year. He did have some home runs. And he was good. He was good for a rookie. Hit two, something like 251 with, um, and he did, and he did show some power. But he was an excellent defensive center fielder. Excellent. Won the gold glove in the outfield for the American League. And then Louis, uh, uh, Lurie Garcia, who will be either the DH or the left fielder, depending on where, what they want to do with Jimenez. And then also, depending on what happens as the season progresses, and we'll see. Uh, but the rotation, now we come to the White Sox rotation. 
Now, uh, last year the White Sox pitching was fifth in the American League with a 381 earned run average. Um, and their rotation lines up something like along the lines of Lance Lynn in the first spot, um, Lucas Giolito, who had a 1.04 whip last year for the White Sox, uh, Dallas Keuchel, who had a 199 earned run average last year, which led the White Sox, Dylan Cease, Michael Kopech, and that's if Michael Kopech decides to play this year or can play if he gets past his, his the, it, many issues that they may have with him coming out of spring training. For one thing, he did not pitch last year, so they have to stretch him out. They have to get him used to a full workload again. So we'll see how that goes. And also, he um, he was he sat out, and there's speculation. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and try to speculate why he sat out because he was totally healthy last year. It could have been um, concerns over the virus, although it may even run deeper than that. But I'm not gonna speculate any further. But anyway, we might see Kopech. Um, in the rotation next year. We may not. We may not see him early, but we'll see him later in the year. We have to see. And then, of course, that's why I put Ronaldo Lopez. I listed him up here as a potential sixth starter because he may come into play, um, especially early on in the season. They may need him pressed into action as the fifth starter. And then even if Kopech does come back and we have those other five, he may be a swing man to give uh, a pitcher or two a day off here and there and go between the starting rotation and the bullpen. So uh, that leaves the bullpen. Well, it actually leaves two things, but one of them is a bullpen. And in the bullpen, we got Liam Hendricks, who we just signed away from the A's. And he was excellent last year. The man can throw some heat. And then you got uh, Cody Hewer, um, then Aaron Bummer. Aaron Bummer was quite good last year. Evan Marshall, both of those guys were good last year. Matt Foster, he saw some action last year for the White Sox. Jimmy Cordero, who had his issues at times, um, but generally he's a good relief pitcher. Jace Fry, the lefty out there, and then Garrett Crotchet, who can throw over 100 miles an hour. So that is an impressive bullpen. I'd probably like to see them get maybe one more arm for the bullpen. Um, but really, this team is kind of stacked, if you know what I'm saying. Then you got the bench is uh, Adam Engel. And he, like I said, I expect him to be the right fielder versus um, left-handed pitching. But we'll see if that happens. Danny Mendick. Um, Zach Collins, who's our, our backup catcher, I think if the team has any weakness, it's at backup catcher. And now you're sitting there and you're saying, well, that's just backup catcher. Well, yes, it's backup catcher, but, you know, Yasmani Grandal, how many games of 162 is he probably going to play? You know, the, the guess is somewhere around 138 to 140 something. So, for like 20 something games or on the order of 20 games or 20 something games you're going to need a good backup catcher you would like to have a good backup catcher Zach Collins ain't it so I mean I'd like to see them upgrade there but you know I mean you know now at this point we're just nitpicking so then you got Nicky Delmonico Delmonico steak we've had him for years um Micah Rodolfo and Andrew Vaughn. And now Andrew Vaughn was the guy I alluded to earlier when I was talking about when we get to the bench. Because Andrew Vaughn may start the year with the White Sox, or maybe he won't start the year with the White Sox. But if he were to start the year with the White Sox out of spring training, then he may flip between first base and DH with Abreu which would knock um, Garcia out of the lineup altogether and let Garcia be the super utility man that he can be, and which I think is uh, his best role for the team anyhow. So that takes us to the Cubs. You like the White Sox. The White Sox are looking good at this point. Now we've got the Whites, they're the Cubs. 
the Cubs last year hit 220 as a team, which was 13th in the National League. Say what? I had to look at that again because I was like, what? The Cubs hit 220? They won 34 games and they hit 220? Yes, they did. Now, of course, some of that is because they had a pitcher. No, they didn't. They had the DH all last year. So that's even worse. But anyway, but this year, the National League will be going with the pitcher bat again. So I don't know why. I don't know when they're going to get around to actually just conceding that they need to have the DH for both leagues. But this year, they're not doing it in the National League. So that 220 batting average is coming down, folks. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Now, part of that was because Anthony Rizzo last year hit an uncharacteristic 222. That was crazy. And Chris Bryant hit 206. Now, you got to expect that that's not going to happen again. So anyway, here's how the Cubs lineup would line up. They're in the green. I think you can see it. Ian Happ in center field. Anthony Rizzo at first. Chris Bryant at third base. Um, Wilson Contreras at catcher. Javier Baez at shortstop, Jason Hayward in right, David Bote in left, Nico Horner at second base, and maybe when they need a DH, when they play American League games um, in the American League parks, maybe Hernan Perez, I would guess, at DH, I don't know. Or maybe Hernan Perez plays one of the positions and one of the other guys becomes the DH, I don't know. So anyway, their rotation. Now, here's something notable that I that I stumbled across when I was doing the Cubs. The Cubs are in such disarray that even on RotoChamp, when I was looking at their lineups, their, their um, starting rotations, their bullpen, they gave me like a ton of guys for all of that. Well, the lineup, they pretty much, they just said the lineup. But for like the rotation, they had like six or seven guys on the rotation listed because they had no idea who really is going to be in that rotation. And the bullpen, they had a ton of guys listed. They really had no idea who near the bottom of that, which of those guys are really going to make the rotation. And if there's any Cubs fans out there want to let me know if they've got a more solid idea of what this bullpen or the bench, you know, might look like, or the rotation, certainly leave a comment below and give me a thumbs up for giving it a shot. But anyway, um... That's, that's how we got. So uh, so we went over the lineup for them. The rotation um, projects is Kyle Hendricks, who had a 288 earned run average last year. Kyle Hendricks has been solid for the Cubs. Historically solid. Zach Davies, who they got in the trade with the Padres, I believe, when they sent you Darvish packing to San Diego. Um, Alec Mills with the uh, last year, who had a 4.48 earned run average. Albert Elzele, who had a 295 earned run average in somewhat limited time starting for the Cubs. Shelby Miller and Tyson Miller. Right now, we're cleaning the grease fryer. We don't have any French fries today. Okay, uh, then just give me a small order of fries, please. Look, Chief, maybe you didn't hear me. I said we don't have any fries today, so how about something else? Now, I have red crosses up here by um, Zach Davies and um, Shelby Miller because those guys historically have been injury prone. And that's going to be a problem that the, um, that the Cubs are going to have to potentially deal with, which is also part of the reason why there's six guys listed up here in their rotation. Now, their bullpen is Craig Kimbrell would be their closer which is bad because he had a 528 earned run average last year and he hasn't been right in several years. Rowan Wick would be their setup guy, potentially. He had a 312 earned run average last year. He's good. Jason Adam, Jonathan Holder, who's bounced around a little bit, I think. Uh, Dwayne Underwood, Dan Winkler, uh, Robert Stock, Robert Stock pitched a couple years ago, two or three years ago in the majors. I remember I had him on one of my strat teams. He was pretty good. Uh, Pedro Strope and Dylan Mapes. Now that takes us to the bench. And again, the bench was one of those things. They listed so many guys, it was hard to get them all in. So let me, yeah, let me take a good look at that bench, all right? Because I'm going to read the names off right now. 
Uh, Austin Romine would probably be the backup catcher. Ironically, they have a better backup catcher than we do. Philip Irvin, um, Max Schrock. No, that's not the guy that played Nosferatu in the old 1930s Dracula film. No. This is a different guy, and hopefully he's better. Uh, Miguel Amaya, Patrick Wisdom, Nicholas Martini, and Matt Duffy. I didn't even have room to list Matt Duffy. That's how, I mean, that's how many guys he got. And then there was another guy with a name I couldn't even pronounce and couldn't spell right. So I didn't even put him up here. But, you know, they got, I mean, that's how many possibilities the Cubs are looking at because they have dismantled their team a little bit by sending out uh, Hugh Darvish. And also some of these guys, and, and really there's trade rumors that Chris Bryant might be headed out of town. And really, if he hits 206 again, who's going to want him? But, uh, you know, and all these guys, Anthony Rizzo, are they going to be able to re-sign Anthony Rizzo? They have a lot of questions, the Cubs do. Now, I would say that as far as their lineup goes, they're still a formidable team. This lineup right here, if this lineup hits the field after spring training, it's a formidable lineup. And they will be a team that needs to be reckoned with when you're pitching to them. Especially if Rizzo and Bryant, you know, uh, bounce back, which is expected. But even Contreras hit 246 last year, I think. So, yeah, if these guys can bounce back, they have a formidable lineup. But the rotation is really only something to be worried about at Kyle Hendricks. Maybe Zach Davies, if he can stay healthy. Zach Davies, when he's healthy, he's a good starting pitcher. But the rest of the guys, I mean, you know, Elzele, he had a 295 earned run average last year in limited pitching duty, but what's going to happen in a full 162-game season when he's one of the big five? Who knows? Alec Mills had a 448 earned run average last year. That's not really intimidating. Um, Shelby Miller, again, he's an injury problem. And I don't even really, I even hesitate to say that Shelby Miller's good when he's healthy because it's really not clear that that's the fact, especially now. There was a time when he was a very good starting pitcher, but injury problems have really just knocked that train right off the tracks. And then Tyson Miller, who knows anything about Tyson Miller? Again, if you do, leave a comment. Um, Craig Kimbrell, the dude has not been good in years. Two or three years at least. I want to say three. Let's go solid three, maybe four. Um, so, you know, having him as your closer, I mean with a 528 earned run average, maybe you can get away with it if you bring him in like with a three run lead. He might only give up two and still get the save. Rowan Wick, he's good. And then after that, you know, there isn't really a lot. There isn't a big book on the rest of these guys. Pedro Strope, yes. Pedro Strope's been around a while. He can be very good. Um, but these other guys, I don't know. So we'll have to see. I think the pitching for the Cubs is suspect. Their lineup, very good. Very formidable. Um, the Sox would have a tough time, I think, with that. Um, with that lineup. But our lineup will decimate that pitching, I believe. But what do you guys think? Especially the Chicago fans, the people that are in Chicago, that can hear all of this stuff on the news and get this get bombarded with it day in and day out. What do you guys think we're headed for in this White Sox um, Chicago Cubs matchup. Now, it's always a big rivalry, and like I said, they've got a good lineup, so I don't think we're going to steamroller the Cubs. That's not going to happen. But I do expect that the White Sox will win this series. And unless I didn't mention it before, we play the Cubs both times in August. Once near the beginning of August, and then once near the end of August. So, at this time, you know, things are going to be rounding, the whole picture is going to be rounding into shape. And we're going to know whether we really need to beat the Cubs a lot or whether we, you know, whatever. I mean, we want to, of course, beat them as much as we can. But we'll have a good idea of where both teams stand by then. 
And who knows, maybe Bryant will be traded by then, too. You never know. So if you are from Chicago or you're following both teams or you're a Cubs fan, let me know where I was off. Let me know what you think um, in a matchup with the White Sox. But for right now, that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing.